Hey gang, Lake Barkley, big bass, lots of fun, lots of action. Stay tuned because Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey guys, my name's Crispin Pally. Welcome to this week's show. I'm excited to be standing in for Barry today, and I'm excited to be standing in the parking lot of a launch ramp on Lake Barkley. Lake Barkley is one of my favorite lakes. It's in Northwest Tennessee and Kentucky, and it is um, about 134 miles long. It's about 58,000 acres, pretty big lake, but it's often overshadowed by Kentucky Lake, which it's in very close proximity to. It was impounded in 1966, so it's been around a while and it has grown some big bass in that time. And I hope to show you some of those today. Really excited to be here. Um, really diverse lake. We're gonna catch some shallow. We're gonna catch some out offshore. It's just, this is summertime fishing at its best. And uh, I hope to show you why Lake Barkley deserves to stand alone and not be in the shadow of Kentucky Lake all the time. We're gonna get you some incredible fishing reports from your local region and your local reporters. I'm gonna get this boat launch set up. And while I do, I'm gonna send you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are pointing towards Sunday and Monday as the best times to be on the water for fishing action over the long holiday weekend. Overall, Monday is anticipated to have the best game fish activity with Labor Day conditions forecast to be excellent. Expect the sun to rise at 7.03 a.m. and set at 7.49 p.m. And evenings will be bright with a moon that is 93% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from around the area on the way. Plus, Bassmaster Elite Angler Ish Monroe joins us for this week's Ask the Pro Question. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Luz. Fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue Bass Baits and Bobby Garland Crappie Baits, the leaders in soft plastic lures innovation. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. It's a nice Lake Barkley keeper up there. Let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing today. Uh, you know, the cool thing about Barkley is that you can catch them shallow and deep pretty much year round. You can catch them in the summertime uh, around shallow bushes, around shallow wood cover, which there's a ton of on these flats that compromise uh, the most of the midsection of the lake. Or you can catch them offshore like you would on, say, Kentucky, like the neighbor lake over here. Uh, today, I am going to spend a little bit of time doing both because I thought that was kind of the unique thing about the lake that I wanted to showcase. I'm going to flip soft plastics primarily to bushes that are near deep water. Uh, they're shallow bushes. They're either right on the edge or right off the edge of the river channel. They're going to be right on the edge or right off the edge of a creek channel. Um, they're going to be primarily the, 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 the money bushes are going to be the ones that are the, on the points or the, the little single bushes that sit out uh, apart. If you've got a big row of bushes running through there and you've got one bush sitting out, odds are that's where your, your bite's going to come. There's one. That's just a nice Lake Barkley keeper right there. You know, I'm starting to put a little bit of a pattern together. Um, I have got to where now every, every bite is either coming on a isolated bush or it's coming on a, the base of a willow tree. So I, I'm kind of skipping around now and kind of not fishing a whole bunch of the in-between stuff. And I'm just really, really concentrated. I've kind of narrowed it down. Like basically every fish I've caught today has come on a bush out by itself or at the base of a willow tree. I'm gonna throw this dude back. I'm gonna find me another willow tree and I'm gonna send you to your local fishing report. Well, over the last couple of weeks, we've had significant amounts of rain in parts of Oklahoma. And as a result of that, that's had those lake levels in those areas like a yo-yo up and down constantly. Now the first couple of hours of the morning, you can do well on a walk the dog type bait like a Zara Spook. And that's also the best way to catch some of your biggest and your best quality fish right now. Concentrate on those long points that come way out into the lake. Don't really have to see any busting going on, but work that bait across those areas like that. And you're gonna catch some nice ones. When that sun gets up higher, your best option is to go offshore. Target areas that have some good cover 
and still the rock piles, the hard bottom surfaces are some of your very best right now, especially as they draw water down. Great combination continues to be the Biffle Hardhead fished with a swimming type of soft plastic trailer on it. Biffle Bug's doing well, Rattling Crawler's doing well, there's some other options you can use on that Biffle Bug Hardhead also. And the same thing for crankbaits, your square bills, your shallow running crankbaits that will stay in that four to six foot range, constantly bouncing the bottom is what you need to be doing, so make sure you have a bait that's staying in contact with the bottom to catch those fish right now. Some of those lakes that have the water receding, you can go back into the pockets and catch them with something like a fluke twitching around in there. It's also a great time of year to see lots of wildlife going on. It's a neat time of year to be fishing. The weather's been amazing. Great temperatures, lots of activity going on. You can catch them, but you can't catch them if you don't go. We're coming right at the boat. That's why. Because he's got salad hanging out of him. Once again, guys, it's that same deal. It's, uh, you know, the thing is when you get to a place like this, like Lake Barkley or, or wherever you fish, um, if, if you get into a situation where there's just, I mean, you, you literally, there, there's more cover than anywhere you've ever seen. It's just incredible, the shallow cover on this lake. And you can spend all day and just catch one here, one there, one here, one there. Or you can kind of really pay attention to what the fish are telling you. Like, like, I've, like I've mentioned, they, they are really, really setting up on isolated bushes and on the bases of willow trees. It's not a long fish, but he's fat and healthy. That's a good sign. Based on the uh, fish that I was seeing up shallow, this one looks a whole lot healthier. Now, I'm going to spend part of my time today here on Lake Barkley fishing offshore or, or a little bit deeper. I'm not going to call it super deep, but it, it's deeper. Uh, and what I'm looking for primarily um, is creek channel stuff. I, I'm going to be in the bays. On the south end of the lake from the Highway 68 bridge south, it, the, the, the lake fishes a whole lot more like a river. And most of your good offshore stuff is going to be in the creek, uh, in the bays where, where you're fishing the actual creek channel. I'm looking for bends, I'm looking for points, like uh, just turns in that creek, just basically uh, irregularities in, in the really contour really of that creek. And that's where most oh, of your yeah. fish are going to congregate. I'm going to use my electronics and try to, try to locate some fish, uh, but there's a lot of stuff over here that's even offshore pretty shallow. And, and in a case like this, a lot of times, if I know where a good spot is, I'm not going to grab it. I'm going to pull right up there yeah. and throw to it. This fish right here don't feel, he's feeling pretty good. Let's go right here. Yeah, that's a pretty fat fish right there. Um, tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. I have been in the bushes and the willow trees and I've caught several, but pulled out here on one of these first outside deals and, and it's kind of a creek ledge, a creek turn. And um, this was one of my first few casts. So I'm gonna run around and throw this, this 6xd around a little bit see what i can't find it's not a long fish but he's fat and healthy that's a good sign based on the uh, fish that i was seeing up shallow this one looks a whole lot healthier so i'm going to put this one back i'm going to get repositioned because the wind's blowing i'm going to send you to your local fishing report hey friends cajun phil here with your fox sports southwest louisiana report i tell you what we're right in between some showers right now i want to take a little short uh break from this to tell you that captain kevin and i are doing fine we're okay, our homes are fine, our lodge is fine. We haven't been on the water, nobody's been on the water. We just wanna say that our prayers are with each and every one that's been devastated by this storm, Harvey. No matter where you live, we know that there's major destruction and it's not a time to be thinking about fishing right now. We just wanna let you know that we are okay. We did have a tornado come through Hackberry, barely missed our lodge by say roughly a thousand yards, it did overturn some trailers and what have you, but we're all okay friends and we just wish each and every one of you good luck. Yes, fishing is important, that's our livelihood. We'll be back on the water in roughly a week or so. We'll be bringing some up-to-date reports about that time, letting you know what's going on, how much high water has uh, done damage to us and when the fishing is going to be good again. We're going to try to keep you up-to-date friends. Keep in mind, the day before Hurricane Harvey came on land, 
we were catching good fish. Matter of fact, two of our boats caught lots of redfish. One of our boats caught lots of speckled trout. The fish are there. They're not going anywhere. We just got to wait till the water clears up and things get back on land. Meanwhile, may God bless each and every one of you. Cranking is one of my favorite ways to catch bass. And, and I'm going to tell you a little common misnomer. Everybody goes out and buys these five one to one and four three to one reels, you know, because they're billed as cranking reels because of the low gear ratio. It makes a crankbait a lot easier to pull. My experience has been that the faster I reel a crankbait, the better I get bit on it. And I know there's a lot of people that would disagree with that and that's completely cool, but my system is, is one of speed and hopefully efficiency. And um, I feel like a, a crankbait We'll, we'll catch an active fish, but where it excels is it'll get, it'll get a reaction bite from a non-active fish. So I, I do feel like a lot of these bass that I'm targeting today are not real active. And I like a crankbait for that because I can take it and basically make them eat it or move. And I'm okay with either one. My theory is more casts I make, the more potential bites I get. So don't look at a crankbait as just a slow moving, uh, bait or, or, or a, a bait that you know is just for active fish. Be a little open-minded about it and you can almost force them to eat this crankbait if you'll throw it enough. There's one right there. Oh, here he is. Whew. I had him hung in something for a second. This feels like a decent fish. Oh! A pretty good one when they got that front hook in their mouth that means they are liking what you're giving them um, another one of the golly bill i'm gonna have to have the pliers to get this one out look at that i mean he has got it that is uh when they're getting the front hook of your crankbait in the mouth that is a great sign that you've got the right color the right action the right retrieve speed um, everything is is just right uh, when they're getting that back hook, they might not be eating it as good, but that front hook is a sure enough sign that, uh, that they like what you're throwing. Guys, we're going to, uh, I'm going to put this one back, try to catch his big brother. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Motor Guide, because accuracy matters. Lawrence Electronics, celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence. Find, navigate, dominate and Exide Technologies, powering the world forward. He's mean. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're on Lake Barkley. And just in case you're interested in coming to Lake Barkley, let me give you a few uh, little tips and facts about the lake. It was impounded in 1966 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It spans about 58,000 acres and um, it, it's, it's known as the sister lake to Kentucky Lake because it runs parallel with Kentucky on a pretty much north and south plain. The north end of the lake, which would be from the Highway 68 bridge north, is a little bit deeper, a little bit clearer, a little bit more offshore. And when you get south of the Highway 68 bridge on what I would call the midsection to the south end of the lake, you'll see that it is more like a river. Uh, it is more shallow cover. There's a little bit more color to the water, uh, very current oriented. There's one. He's mean. Flipped that rage bug in that bush and he just smoked it. Now, let me tell you a little about what I've done. Started out this morning, shallow. Um, the, the, the shallow bite was fair at best. It wasn't as good as I was hoping it'd be, so I moved out and I caught some better fish. But, man, I came over here to catch them shallow, so I've jumped back up here around the bank. The sun's higher and a lot of times when the sun gets high, everybody I, I think often has this preconceived notion that cloudy you know early and late is best for shallow in the middle of the day when it's hot is best for deep while i understand that let me tell you why i might disagree when the sun's straight overhead it puts all of the shadow in the cover so a bush or a log or a tree at that point in time in my mind is more attractive to a bass for the shade that it offers so i'm going to put him back 
re-rig. I'm gonna get over here and catch another one out of a shady bush. I'm gonna send you to your inside fishing report. Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you by the Breckland Ranch. Now whether you wanna hunt trophy whitetails or exotic species, the Breckland Ranch has what you're looking for. And it's family run, family owned, family operated, and you're part of the family. Come out this year and hunt with Breckland Ranch. Now we're gonna start with Squaw Creek, and yes, I know it's a power plant lake, and it's the heat of summer, but you know what? The bass are still biting, and they're biting fantastically right now. You'll wanna use your deep diving crankbaits and or Carolina rigs and drop shots on the deeper points near the timber on Squaw Creek. For your Carolina rigs and drop shots, try four inch finesse worms in your June bug, watermelon, or purple type colors. And for your crankbaits, use your shad colors that'll dive to at least 15 to 20 feet. Now over on Lake of the Pines, they've got a good bass bite, but the story right now is really the crappie. They're on the bridges and the brush. You'll be fishing about 15 feet deep, maybe to 18 feet, using your minnows and or crappie jigs in your standard chartreuse, red, white, or even blue cinnamon colors for your crappie. And of course, bass, start those early on top with your buzz baits and pop bars. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by Breckland Ranch. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report and our September issue is now on sale on newsstands with timely tips for great fresh and saltwater fishing, plus early hunting opportunities for dove and teal. Pick up a copy of Texas Outdoors Journal on newsstands or subscribe at texasoutdoorsjournal.com or call 713-957-3997. Well, obviously, many Texas coastal anglers are dealing with the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Port Aransas, Rockport, Fulton, and parts of Aransas Pass were devastated. Other nearby areas of Corpus Christi and North Padre Island escaped with minimal or no damage. Please remain out of these areas and let officials and owners do what is needed to start the long recovery process. Now, the impact of fishing on affected areas will be similar to fishing after spring floods. From San Antonio Bay northward to Sabine Lake, look for freshwater to push trout and redfish to the south ends of the bay. As tides drop out, set up around the mouths of back lakes or marsh drains. Southward from Corpus Christi Ship Channel to the lower Laguna Madre at Port Isabel, fishing should be very good. Trout and reds will be along shorelines and on the flats. Look for the topwater bite to continue to improve. Now, should you decide to get on the water, be sure to watch out for storm debris. Also, be sure to wear your PFD and always attach the kill switch. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I will see you on the coast. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday at 5.30, or catch the repeat airing Saturday morning at 8. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button. And see lots of our how-to and product videos by selecting the how-to button. Join our online fishing community. Just click the like button on our Facebook page for access to daily posts with lots of fishing news, videos, and frequent giveaways. And stay up to date with all the latest fishing information and photos by following our Twitter feed. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than a boat, it's a tracker. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Tanner would like to know, what is strolling? For the answer, we ask Bassmaster Elite Angler Ish Monroe. Well, strolling is technically illegal in tournament bass fishing according to bass rules. But strolling is basically you're taking a cast with your lure and you're making the longest cast you possibly can. Then you're taking your trolling motor, which you're uh, basically out of gear, your reel out of gear, and you're trolling back as far as you possibly can to where you're almost out of line and then you start cranking, you click it over in gear and start cranking. And so you've pretty much made a long cast and added an extra, you know, 30 yards by just moving your trolling motor down the bank with uh, the bump thumb bar down and start cranking there and that's called strolling. 
Thank you, Ish. If you have a question for one of the pros, visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link on the right side of the page, and send it in. Now one of our viewers wins a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. It's time for this week's Costa Catch of the Week podcast. This week's Costa Catch of the Week winner is Doug Dodson of San Antonio, Texas. Showing his 11 pound largemouth bass he caught out of the Medina River in Texas. To enter the contest, go to foxsportsoutdoors.com. Click on Costa Catch Box off to the right side of the homepage and follow the instructions to send in your big fish photo. You could win a new pair of Costa sunglasses. Here's the gear you need to do what you saw today. I had three very important components to making my day much easier and much more efficient. One would be the terminal coffin and the deep cranking coffin from Bass Mafia. Their boxes are second to none. The terminal coffin keeps everything just completely organized. I could go from shallow to deep, all my weights, hooks, everything super easy to find. Deep cranking coffin holds 44 deep diving crankbaits. So to make that move like I did when I got out wide and started catching those fish deep, the deep, deep cranking coffin was invaluable. The number two thing would be the power pole blades. Perhaps the coolest invention ever for a bass boat. I would pull up to an area where there were two or three isolated bushes, which were the key, drop those power pole blades and sit there without moving. Never touch a trolling motor, spook a fish, never move and, and make pinpoint cast with my boat completely under control. And number three, what is often overlooked is my Atlas jack plate from TH Marine. You know, when you're running around a lake like Lake Barkley, which is an impoundment of the Cumberland River, which is primarily flat and shallow, there's a lot of times when you've got to get up on plane in shallow water or you've got to run across a shallow flat. With that Atlas jack plate, I can alter the height of my motor to make it more efficient and make it just safer all the way around. I can take off shallower, I can run shallower, I can adjust for the load of my boat. That's the gear you need. Let me talk to you for a minute about stuff that matters. You know, we live in a day and age, a society, a culture where everything in life has gotten to be about me or about you. It's about what makes us happy, what makes us feel good, what's convenient. And none of that stuff is wrong or bad. Being happy, feeling good, convenience is, is awesome. But um, I, I heard a, a phrase the other day, and I've heard it before, but it just really struck me this time, and that's the phrase, random act of kindness, which is an awesome thing to do, um, just to randomly uh, do a kind act for someone. What I want to challenge you to do is be intentionally kind. What if we got up each day with the intention of being kind to everybody we encountered. Um, in, the, in the morning when you get your coffee, what about buying the guy behind you a cup of coffee just because? Uh, at the gas station, what if you pump gas for the little old lady you encounter? Uh, let somebody pull out in traffic. Um, just there's a million ways that we can show our kindness to people and change the world we live in. That's stuff that matters. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you had as much fun as I did learning how to find and catch summertime bass on Lake Barkley. Barry will be back with you next week. Until then, great fishing and God bless.